The Japanese meteorological agency has officially named Tropical Storm Poto, Philippine name Jenny, currently with winds of 40 miles per hour, pressure 999 millibars, as of 5 p.m. Philippine Standard Time this August 27th. Overall, Poto is not going to have much of an impact for the Philippines, however, rainfall will be the biggest factor with some areas getting 10 to 20 inches, which is why we do have it as a stage 2 on the CDPS, significant damage when it does go through the region of Luzon later on today. It is at 15.1 degrees north, 124.9 degrees east, again stage 2 on the CDPS, significant damage for where it's going to be going through most of Luzon going through today and in overnight hours. Some places that can be impacted include Digalon, where we could see a potential landfall at 161 miles, Quezon City at 189, Manila, capital of Philippines at 193, Sanya on Hainan at 968 miles, and Donghui, Vietnam at 1,151 miles. Pagasa has already gotten ahead of this storm and has issued Signal 2 warnings for Isabella, Aurora, and Corino regions of Luzon. Signal 1 warnings for the rest of the regions of Luzon that does include Manila and Quezon City. Getting into the rainfall forecast, you can see that the Philippines will get heavily impacted going through today and into Wednesday. And then it's going to be really a toss-up of whether or not Poda will make a run for Hainan or go up through the East Vietnam Sea and make landfall in Vietnam over the weekend. GFS is touting another significant storm back over Luzon by Sunday and into next Monday. So we will have to keep an eye on what that is going to do as we get into next week. Sea surface temperatures for Polo are not going to be an issue though, 27 and 28 degrees Celsius. Once it does get into the South China Sea, you can see some 29s and even some 30s into the East Vietnam Sea. However, sea surface temperatures is not what's going to hold it back. Getting into the forecast, so you will see it will go through the Philippines, Luzon mainly as a minimal tropical storm. And then it'll be a big wild card as to whether or not it can get its act together going through the South China Sea and into the East Vietnam Sea and whether or not it is going to intensify. Most models right now do keep it as a tropical storm. There are a couple rogue ones that do take it much higher. And again, you can see that next system coming in through the Luzon region by Sunday and Monday of next week. It's going to be interesting to see how, in how intense that storm is going to be. But for the next five days, trends of tropical storm force winds are looking like this. Dingalon at 24%, Sanya and Hainan at 22%, Quezon City in the Philippines at 19%, Manila at 18%, and Dong Hoi at Vietnam at 14%. Getting into those models, most of the models do keep this as a minimal to moderate tropical storm. H Wharf, they're being a little roguish, trying to take it up to its highest category 3 status there. Interesting that it's going to do that, but I don't think that's going to happen, especially not when the shear is not very favorable for it. 25 knots in some spots there over the next couple days, and then you can see the track there where the CTCX is the only one that wants to take it into high non-GFS and H are pretty confident of a Vietnam landfall. Getting into the imagery there, you can see where the circulation of Podal is at. Pretty well exposed as wind shear has been taking its toll on its structure on the eastern side. It's pretty well devoid. Most of the convection is on the western side. You can see it's getting blown most, over most of the Luzon region of the Philippines this hour. And that rain is going to be impacting there. That's why we do see a chance of 10 to 20 inches. And looking at the infrared, you can see where a lot of that convection is getting sheared overall. But rest assured, if you're in the Philippines, this will be out of here by the end of Tuesday, Wednesday. And if you're in Hainan, Vietnam, keep an eye on this as uh, this could be coming your way. We'll be watching it, and so should you. We'll have more on it later on. Thank you for watching this production of Force 13. For more information about Force 13, you can reach us on all of our media outlets. Our website, force13.com, where we are revamping the website and writing new articles for your reading pleasure. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash force13. You're probably there already. If you are, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button to keep getting updates like these rolling into your mailbox. We're also on Facebook, keyword Force 13, where we'll post our articles and keep an eye out there for any live events that we may simulcast there. We're also on Twitter, keyword Force 13. And if you want to look swag like our own Nathan Four here, you can rock our colors by going to our store. Our store is store.force13.com, or you can continue directly to the project by way of the Patreon. 
more information about patronage and the privileges you can get from it can be found at patreon.com forward slash force 13. And if you want to reach out to the project directly, you can reach out to us at force 13 on Skype. Or you can hit me up directly at extension T Ren, extension 1375. Or you can hit that link in the bottom of the description to get to our Discord. That information also available at the end of this segment.